just need to wait for that to boot up now. It's currently searching for signal, but... Yeah, there we go. Saw it is pointing straight up, but I imagine it might reorientate itself. Considering it's not entirely aimed in the correct direction yet, that's not too bad for uh, remote applications like what I'm doing. Plus, I do have the uh, the RV subscription, so it does limit connectivity uh, depending on network network conditions. So I do have it plugged into my the uh, Wi-Fi plus the dish into the EcoFlow, and it's only using 34 watts. So. I can get continuously like probably like around 20 hours just with this battery bank on the Starlink. But I do have a solar panel that I'm going to hook up to it too to keep it topped off. Alright, so this is only a 60 watt panel, but uh, it will be enough to keep it topped up during the day. Kind of want to keep the battery bank in the shade, but. Oh, and the dish reorientated. Okay, cool. Alright, so the panels are putting in 51 watts. And, uh, like I said earlier, Starlink is drawing about 30 watts. So, this should pretty much keep the power during daylight. And, uh, should be enough to keep it up all night if I need to. Excellent. Alright, so it's probably about quarter till five. And,. The sun is starting to dip behind the trees, so my panel is not really illuminated much anymore. But what I did is uh, I went ahead and I plugged in my EcoFlow into my uh, truck inverter, and the truck is running for now. Anyways, I've been uh, using Starlink all day, and it's uh, it's been working quite well. It does actually uh, end up dropping out because there isn't perfect coverage or might have a tree that's creating like an RF shadow on the panel. I've been I've been streaming, I've been listening to music, it's it's worked out well. Now, you know, typically when I go camping like this, a lot of people do this to just disconnect and you know sometimes I do that too, but I also kind of find that it's important to uh, have various backup modes of communication. And uh, so the Starlink is really going to be one aspect of that for me, especially when I go to really remote places over winter. Uh, you know, if I go up to uh, Johnson Valley or uh, try to do this first camping out in Joshua Tree or, you know, any, any very remote location where there's no cell signal, um, basically it will enable me to send text, text messages, have Wi-Fi calling, um, so if anything does happen, you know, it's it will help me. Now you might ask, well, why not get like a Garmin inReach? It's a good question, honestly. Uh, that might be something that I might actually add as a tool in the future, but uh, it does have a substantial subscription fee in addition, and you get like a limited number of text messages per month, I believe. And uh, there's just other limitations to it. Like you don't get data service with it. This is really like a, you know, if you have an emergency, you can hit the SOS button on it. That's great. But this kind of gives me more options. I do have uh, these GMRS radios as an additional backup. And uh, my wife has another one. We haven't quite tested them yet for uh, for this situation, but the problem with GMRS and really any radio communication in general is you're dependent on whether there's repeaters in the area. And like if you're if you're just doing like simplex, like say you're like driving down the car down the uh, interstate caravanning with other people. You know, you can use like a simplex frequency and just talk back and forth, that's fine. But, you know, these are only like little 5 watt radios. 
and you know so really you have to be in an area where there's a repeater to use them now luckily in the area there are several gmrs repeaters i can use so i do have a uh, check-in period with my wife so if something does go wrong and she knows that um like if i don't check in she knows exactly where i'm located based off of a pin on a map and uh so it just kind of gives everybody peace of mind and personally i'd rather yeah, like any time you go to a remote location, you always have to make sure that you, you tell other people exactly where you're going. And more importantly, try not to deviate from that plan. So I am packing up and uh, I need to pack away my uh, Starlink dish. So I just want to show you how that goes. It worked well overnight. I was able to stream a movie before going to bed. Um, it did have quite a bit of obstructions. And I'll show you why. Like, if you look, the dish is pointed north, but I have these trees in the way. And actually, when looking on the, on the app, before I powered it down last night, you could see a shadow of those trees in the obstruction map. So it wasn't perfect. It was dropping, I don't know, probably every few minutes, but... Still, it was enough to even just stream stuff or get basic internet access, so it didn't really hinder anything. Let me show you how, how this works. So I'm launching the Starlink app. Okay. Go to settings. And stow. Yes. And you see it positions the dish down so I can put it back in this packing box. I do want to find a more permanent solution for, for packing this up. I've seen other people use Pelican cases, but Pelican cases are just way overpriced. So uh, I am looking for uh, something that I can use to better protect it because I don't want it to get banged around or, or damaged. And uh, I imagine using the original shipping box would, it would probably end up uh, it would protect it, but the box over time would uh, deteriorate, so. All right, time to pack it away. I do have my truck running to top up my Eco EcoFlow. Last night when I turned off Starlink, it was around like 40%, but I didn't want to burn down any excess energy I had in there for just in case I needed it. And uh, I have the truck charging it right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just Turn off the inverter side, unplug it. Okay, so you have two connectors on the bottom of the Wi Fi router. The left one here is the AC connection, and the right one is the uh, Ethernet dish connection. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the Ethernet dish connection first so I can roll up the cable. Plus, the uh, the one common complaint about these connectors, even though this is an ethernet cable, they use these proprietary connectors, which is really kind of annoying. They should have just used RJ45, but uh, I don't want to drop that in the dirt and then get anything in the connector. Otherwise I'd be buying a replacement, uh, a replacement cable. So, all right, let's, uh, let's get this rolled up. All right, I have the box. As you can see, it's really bulky. There are different internal packing components here that help secure everything. Um, the Wi-Fi router goes in this section, but the um, dish cable kind of fits in there. Next, I'm gonna remove the dish from the uh, stand, which just, you simply have a button in the back here that you press. And it will lift up. Hard to do that one-handed. And it will just fit down in there. Right, just like that. Connector in the bottom dish does come out, but it just pretty much ships with a pre-plugged in. So just gonna leave it like that. Then you got this piece that goes on there, I believe, like that. It protects where the motors are and where, where the pole for the dish is. 
and then the stand fits in there. Uh, I think I got that backwards, do don't I? Okay, that's how it goes. So that, that insulates the stand from the back of the antenna, and just like that. You can see why I would want to get a better case for this, because that's just, it's not going to hold up over time.